hit on these five friction points, just illustrate them, and then the, the solutions that follow. First is the inefficient transfer of value. The titling system as it stands in the developing world is inefficient, um, uh, but it works. In many parts of the world, it's non-existent, um, and that significantly impacts value. I'll hit that just briefly a little bit more. The agreements uh, associated with real estate, the, the lease agreements and other items are confusing. They're, pro they're irregular. So each one's different. They're pros. What this makes it is very difficult to score risk at large scale, and as a result, it makes it difficult to uh, invest at scale, to securitize and be able to take advantage of the value that's there. Um, Gap lies here. They've got a great model to, to, uh, to attack this problem. I'm going to hit on that a little bit more. Um, there's uh, a, a general lack of liquidity associated with these large transaction sizes. Uh, the, the banking industry had this problem of boom and bust. What most folks know, the Great Depression and the run on banks that happened uh, during the Great Depression, that was a regular occurrence. We just never had that scale in the decades before then. And every five to 10 years, there'd be a run on banks. They have a solution to this, and we're proposing that same solution to the real estate industry to counter uh, what is basically, in, in real estate regionally, you have a boom and bust about every five years. And what we've seen nationally and internationally is a boom and bust cycle every 10 years. So if you think each decade of the last decade has had a major boom and bust liquidity event, we can solve this problem and through some things we're going to walk through. All right. Um, additionally, access to these to the larger uh, opportunities associated with real estate, commercial real estate, for example, has been limited. A limited class of users who can get to this, uh, wealthy uh, individuals, it hasn't been open to the general public largely. That's starting to change. We're going to hit on that a little bit. Crowdsourcing brings some new models there. And then finally, and most importantly, the whole notion of ownership is going to change to usership, something we're seeing in other sectors and uh, we think we're going to see in real estate as well. So the five answers to this that stem from blockchain are changes to titling, which uh, we've heard a little bit about, we're going to hear more about uh, later. The use of smart contracts and the implication of smart contracts, uh, which are blockchain based, we'll hit on that a little bit. Our company is working on the liquidity engine component, I'll talk about that a little. Um, crowdsourcing, Fundrise and others are there, but was through some new models, there's new opportunities there. And then finally, uh, this notion of usership that builds on each one of these components to allow for more free exchange of value. Um, let me highlight each one of these with a quick one and then turn it over for questions. I, I uh, don't mean to take up too much time. All right, so um, on titling, I was talking uh, several months back with someone who was doing real estate development in Nicaragua. And the problem there was there's basically four titles for any piece of land. Free Sandinista, Sandinista, post Sandinista, and current government. So if you want to develop your, uh, you want to put uh, a new resort uh, in that area, you go and you gather the capital in order to do this, and you want to go and make a claim. You want to buy from somebody that piece of land. So you do. And then you find out three other people come along and make the same claim to that land and go to court with you and um, you incur a whole lot of fees as you try and resolve who in fact owned this land. Now why would those other three people come out of the woodwork? Well suddenly the value of that land has, has just gone up and so it's great to go and fight that in court in order to make this. This friction undermines development. So it causes a lack of liquidity in these regions and it's common across the world uh, to, to face these kinds of problems. If you think it's just a developing world problem, it's not mineral rights here in the United States. So you own a, a piece of land that has oil in Texas. Someone approached me with this very problem. Three generations ago, it was owned by a single individual. That person got married, had uh, 12 kids. Each one of them now own a piece of that. They had three kids, two of them divorced, some of them in, in strange settlements. And before long, if I want to go and purchase those mineral rights, I've got to run through all of these records in order to figure out and, and resolve with all of those potential owners who owns this piece of land. What that causes is a lack of that, the mineral rights to that land. It causes a lack of liquidity. It makes these transactions very difficult in order to, to pursue. There are great answers to these problems, which um, we're going to hit on a little bit more with some questions. Um, let me just... Well, let me just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, we've got some more yeah, points. Yeah, why don't we start with titling, and then we can move to some of the other points you were raising. You so 
Um, you know, one of the things I, I think we need to do, of course, is like this is a what we're painting is is as I call it utopian, but like our our perfect vision, what we want here, our vision for for the future, and it is this this universal distributed ledger that everybody can refer to and it never breaks. Um, the problem is we have to transition from this to that. And I think uh, maybe Christian, can, yeah. and also Avi, since you've delved into the current system as it is, how do we get there? How do we get there with all these different fragmented fiat uh, you know, sources of power who really have no interest in trade, or at least would find it very difficult to, to, to transition? Yeah, I think uh, the, the transition problem is obviously you know, the challenge right now. Obviously, we have a new technology that, that uh, meshes very well with an industry need uh, that adds up to a lot of dollars, and, 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 and now we need to figure out how do we move from the current state to the future state. Um, as Avi said, it's going to be a gradual thing. Uh, if you look at how the blockchain technology itself works, uh, sure, I can go and record you know, ownership of this property here on a blockchain that, that has limited value in and of itself. What increases the value of that record is over time as future transactions get recorded. Now you have not only you know, the current owner, but you also see the history of, of, of that title. So you know, the longer, the more transactions they have been over time, uh, in a way, the more secure you are in that title because you've had all of these 50 years, let's say, where no one has come out of the woodwork with, with, with an external claim that was not registered anywhere. So, so the, the value of this technology will grow over time as, um, as it gets used more and more. To spark that usage is, is, is the, uh, the challenge today. I believe that the title insurance uh, companies and the people that do the title search on that history, they're the one who have the most to lose and potentially also the most to gain from this technology. Um, this technology could, in theory, you know, replace the concept of title search because here you have a publicly accessible database that anybody can look at and you can see at some point in the future the history of, uh, of, of, of a particular property. So that could jeopardize a little bit this process of title search. Don't worry, the title companies are not going anywhere anytime soon. But I think the opportunity is for them to actually capture this new technology and actually, at a lower cost, being able to offer services that today uh, can be you know, onerous on some of the large commercial transactions. But do they become the uh, instigators? I mean, obviously, somebody else is going to have to be inputting the data to a blockchain. I mean, how does the title company become the driver of this? Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's where the, the, the title plans come into play, right? These title companies already have significant databases of information. Okay. They, they share that information with one another, right? You know, so if I'm going to buy a, a, a piece of property uh, and I'm working with a particular title company that doesn't necessarily have a lot of information on it, they'll reach out to other title companies and they, they, you know, they, sh they already share they that. They couldn't that do their business data. unless they had that interoperability. Exactly, of some exactly. Sort, right? yeah. So blockchain becomes, uh, so one, one of the, you know, regardless of the industry that, 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 that you're looking at, one of the advantages of blockchain in terms of integrating information is that you, you, know, you put it out there and, and everybody can come work at it. So when you have multiple commercial partners that don't necessarily have integrated system, I have my own database, you have your own database, and you have your database as well, uh, blockchain becomes a good integration layer, if you will. If we all agree to use the system, we can easily post and read information from it without having to go through a fairly complex IT integration you know, uh, project between databases. Mm -hmm. 